Hey folks, you know, I've talked a little bit about on the channel about some of the issues that you have, that some of us have in terms of so social isolation and what happens to our work groups in retirement and, you know, just different things like that. But, you know, the other thing I'd, I'd like to spend a little time on is with some of that social isolation and changing jobs, one of the incredible opportunities that comes about when you retire. Uh, but before I do that, I'd like to ask that you take a moment, subscribe to the channel, uh, like the channel, and leave some comments. If, there's, if there are things that you would like to discuss on the channel, leave some comments uh, in, the, in the comment section. Uh, I read all of the comments and I respond to all of the comments. Uh, as quickly as I can, but uh, that helps me make sure that what I'm talking about is helping you. But on that note, let's get into it. So again, going back to, you know, we talk a little bit about the social isolation, the change because you're not working anymore and you're not experiencing some of the same people. But what I find is that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, and so I want to talk about a few of the people that I've met and how my peer group has changed uh, since I retired for in a positive way, in a more cup filling way. Um, you know, my peer group now is are, are people that are, are really experienced. They're experienced with retirement. They're experienced with life. In most cases, they're already retired. So I'm out meeting all of these retired folks. So when I was working, a lot of the folks that were retired were invisible. And so now that I'm part of that invisible group, um, you know, I'm starting to meet people that, that, that fall into that because that's, that's what I represent now. Um, and, you know, I find these folks are just incredibly relaxed. It's, it's funny because you meet a lot of folks and they're trying to figure you out, they're sizing you up, and they're trying to understand you. But when, you, when people are retired, most of the time, they're just out there trying to enjoy the fact that they have a, they're able to retire, that they have some life left and they're, and they're living life. You know, they're willing to share their experiences. Um, a lot of times they'll offer you advice. Uh, you know, generally only if you ask. They're not, they're not, doing, uh, they're not doing too much and, and trying to tell you how to, how to live your life. But if you have some advice, you know, I tend to ask people, what's the biggest thing that you would change if you had the opportunity to do it over again? And if somebody asked me that question, then I have some very specific answers that I would share with them. And uh, if that comes up in the comments, Perhaps that'll be a, um, a topic of a, of a future video. Um, you know, and, and a lot of them do cool things. They do interesting stuff, stuff I didn't even know existed, things that I didn't know normal people did. And, and what the other thing that's interesting is they're excited to meet you as you are to meet them. And that seems like something small, but it's different. You know, I don't know if we can remember when we met somebody, that person that we liked, and how excited we got when that person called to us and said, hey, it was nice meeting you, out of the blue, unsolicited, not because they want something from you, but because they just enjoyed meeting you. And then you're feeling like, man, I want to tell that person how great. Well, that, that type of thing happens. It's it's interesting and there's no motivations and there's no agendas and it's, it's just, Hey, we're in this thing called life. Let's, ex let's experience it together. And so you, you get a lot of that. So let me give you a couple of examples of, of some people that I've encountered. Um, you know, the first one is a guy named Ron. The way I met Ron, Ron used to always walk. I have a lake behind my house with a walking trail. And so he would walk by the lake and I'd see him. And he kind of reminds me of my dad a little bit. They're probably in the same age range. And he would stop. I'd say hi to him. And then we'd talk about football and, and things like that. And then all of a sudden, I didn't see Ron anymore. So Ron, I, I'm at the grocery store. And I see him right right when I retire. It's, it's, it's funny. how I, I believe the universe coalesces around the right idea. And I see him. And I'm like, hey. And he, we start talking. And... He tells me, oh, yeah, you walk. I say, yeah, I walk. Uh, you know, I try to walk a few days a week. So, yeah, let's get together and walk. 
So we started walking. And every Tuesday, about one o'clock, two o'clock, we go for a walk and we just talk. And we talk about stuff. And, and I will I will tell you that I don't laugh as hard as I as I do when I'm talking to him. And this is a guy, he's been retired for, you know, over 20 years. Um, he's an ex-musician, so we would talk about his um, his experiences dealing with musicians. So the folks like the James Brownses and and the uh, you know Nat Cole, Nat King Cole, and and just people in the music scene that he would come across and, and different experiences. And, you know, it's just it's just it's an incredible, and he, he plays the trumpet, and he's uh, he's starting to get back into it now. And in fact, he's one of the people that motivated me to play the piano. I had told him that I'd always wanted to play an instrument and, and all of those types of, you know, and that I'd always been involved in, in, in music. And I used to DJ and I used to curate the environment, but I never had the time or the discipline to learn an instrument. And he says, you know, why don't you just do it? There's no other time than now. And so I went out and bought a piano and I've been working on it ever since. That's not to say that his life hadn't made a few turns. We talk about his relationship with his father. We talk about, you know, some of the relationship experiences that he's had, which interestingly enough, as new as I thought my life was, it's not as new and and unique. I mean, it's it's unique, but it's not unique. And, you know, but the beauty of it is, is he's come out on the other side in a better place and he's able to share those learnings. But through all of this, it's all with a positive disposition. It's, hey, we have the opportunity to know each other. And so let's know each other and let's spend time with each other and let's just enjoy. So it's, uh, so that's, so it's, 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 that's an, it's an incredible experience because it's not, hey, how you doing? Nice to know you. I got to go. But it's, hey, let's take a walk. We usually walk for a bit. And, you know, he's, he's a little bit older than I am. Uh, maybe a lot bit, but I, I you know, but I, I think that, you know, but what, what, you know, so we'll walk and we'll sit down and we'll just talk and we'll dissect ideas. We'll discuss ideas. We'll discuss music. We'll go into music theory, which he knows a lot about. And I'm just a rookie at, but it's just, it's, it's incredible. And it, it fills my cup. And I, my wife tells me sometimes that she notices the difference in me when I'm, when I go walk and run. So I, I really appreciate the time that I get to that I get to spend with uh, with Ron, you know, another person that I met maybe a little more recently is an individual named Rick. And folks, these are the real names, so I know it's Ron and Rick, but an, a guy named Rick, and he's also um, been retired for for a couple of you know over twenty years. But it's it one of the thi- it's interesting because he retired and then started a whole different life outside of what he did as a, as a, when he was working. So he's a, he's a college lecturer and he, uh, his, his uh, study, his body of work is around political science. And so the, the art of politics or the, 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 uh, the, the, I don't know what you call it, the pedagogy, if you will, of politics. He's a political science lecturer because he enjoys working with the young folks, helping folks understand how government works, helping people understand some of the historical components of how we got to where we are today and, and those types of things. Really calm guy, really easygoing guy. Uh, and really enjoy my conversations with him. And so I'm thinking the guy's just an academic. And I, I've always had this idea that academics are these theoretical people that don't deal with the real world. But then I, I go on to learn that uh, he's a he's a Vietnam era veteran who flew, who piloted B-52 bombers. And so then he told me that and it just completely blew me away. I just thought that was the coolest thing. My father is retired Air Force. Um, he passed away some years ago, but he's retired Air Force. And I've always had a fascination with military planes. I've had a fascination with how things work. My father was involved with satellite technology. So interestingly enough, a side note, he would tell me about things like GPS and the internet back in the 80s before we were even thinking about them because the government, 
was using that technology to find submarines and to to manage information so it's just it's a whole thing but it's just interesting because he would tell me he tells me stories about flying those b-52 bombers and those are the big dogs he also owns a, 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 a few classic planes he owns a uh, he has all the names for them so he tells me about them he gets excited i get excited for him because i think it's cool but i don't really know the different plane types so i couldn't i couldn't tell you but they're classics. They're, they're planes that are that are known nationally that fly around in air shows. So when you go and see the Thunderbirds or when you go and see the Blue Angels and they have some of those other air shows, um, they'll usually have classic planes there that they'll show and they'll kind of display and do a couple of tricks and so on. So he owns some of those and his planes are shown in museums and stuff. It's just it's it's crazy because this is just an individual that I met on a golf course and we just got into a conversation and we started talking. He asked me, you know, what do you do? I said, I'm retired. He says, oh, I'm retired too. And we started talking about how little stress people that are retired actually have and how that changes the interactions and how heavy you could see it on other people that when they're working, how heavy the, the weight is from just the stuff they deal with, with at work. And that's, that's needless to say that this guy is a, is a great golfer. I mean, he's not knocking the ball 300 yards. I, I like to say I hit the ball 300 yards. The problem I have is straightening him out. He's consistent. Captain consistency is what I call him. He hits the ball straight, gets straight down. You know, when you're, when you're at that age, efficiency becomes incredibly important. He's incredibly efficient. He's a great golfer. He has great tips. He understands the game. And it's just an interesting, real interesting individual. And he sits on a few boards of some nonprofit organizations. And he just does a bunch of stuff. And it's, but he's the most mellow. If his name wasn't Rick, I'd call him Chuck for Chuck Chill Out. Because the guy is so just relaxed. Because he doesn't have the stress. And he's doing the stuff that, that fills his cup and, and makes, him, makes him tick. And he's just, he's just an overall interesting cat. And so... I think that when you retire, if, if one of your fears is around that social isolation and and not having, you know, the social network around you where you can um, go in and have people that identify you a certain way and talk to if you if you open yourself up, you'll you'll realize there's a whole other group of individuals out there and at, at different ages. You have retired folks in their their 40s. You have retired folks in their 50s and 60s. Um, You have some in their 70s and 80s. And I've met people that are in their late 50s, early 60s. And it's just just a completely interesting, uh, different experience. And so if that's one of your fears, don't let that scare you. And if nothing else, I'll be your friend. I'm a retired person, always looking to meet new people. Send me a message. We'll connect. Um, I think some of you, if you if you look at the comments of some of my recent videos, you'll see that I have comments in there from a guy named uh, Joe. And Joe's another YouTube guy that um, I sent him an email. And, you know, now we correspond back and forth. And it's, you know, it's, it's not heavy. It's none of that. And, you know, I'm not heavy into him. He's not heavy into me, but it's, we know each other and we just kind of correspond back and forth. It's just, it's just great. And it's just extending yourself. And when you have the capacity to extend yourself and you extend yourself, it's just a great feeling. And you start to build your network in a way that you feel good about, not because you need folks to fill your time, but because you enjoy what these folks are bringing to your life. And it becomes a matter of, you know, helping them you know, hoping that you help them feel as good as they're making you feel. So again, so there's, there's a lot of upside to the early retirement picture. I I think when you go down that path, you'll enjoy it. It'll be different, but it'll be different in a good way. And uh, so don't let that dissuade you. So again, if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you like the channel, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, The subscribe button, I think, really helps us get this channel out to as many people as possible. So 
people could benefit from from this information. And it's it's always my hope that this, uh, I, I don't think we segment out different parts of our lives. I think all of our life is our life. But what this does is it, it helps us gain perspective on, on you know, how the future could look uh, for each of us. So again, this is your main man, Sabado Higante. Uh, I'm going to sign out. Thank you for taking a look. And we will connect soon.